Yeah, when you look at Atlanta, it is the it is the capital of Southern wrestling, the rich history from Ric Flair to Dusty Rhodes, TBS wrestling beaming out across the nation. It is the epicenter, at least for my childhood, it was a big part of the epicenter of pro wrestling. In the last decade or two, it, you know, it's drifted. It's drifted elsewhere. It's drifted to WWE. It's drifted to uh, different companies. But uh, the wrestling fans of Atlanta, man, they 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 stay strong. And so when we decided to go and hit new towns and, and branch out beyond the Northeast uh, and hit places like Chicago, hit Tampa, you know, Atlanta was one of those key markets we wanted to hit. We knew the history. We knew it was rich and ripe for it. And Alex came former MLW world champion. He's, he's from Atlanta. We knew this was going to be a, a probably a good market for us, but didn't know if we would sell out, you know, almost two weeks in advance uh, and be as hot as we are. I mean, there's, there's a lot of talk in the town right now going into the show this week and we're pumped. From your kind of catbird seat there, how have you seen MLW grow, change, respond to what's going on in the world to where it is, you know, right now, which which seems to me to be a very, very healthy company putting on a lot of big shows and, and selling and selling these shows out? Yeah, I, I think you got to you know what we had on our business plan in 2017 by 2020 was, you know, being shredded in a paper shredder. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had a pandemic, you had AEW. You know, when we started this, TNA was like, uh, it was on the block. So they were looking at the car family was looking to sell. It, it wasn't looking like there was going to be a, a potential oh, a buyer at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, Lucha Underground was fading. So it was like a unique time. There was no AEW. And so by 2020, you know, the landscape had vastly changed. And you have the content is king era where there's a lot of interest in media rights and around the pro wrestling space. Wrestling is hot. Uh, and then over the years, you know, you see the competition changes, ownership of one of your competitors changes, uh, all these things happening in the world of wrestling and in the media rights world and the landscape. Uh, and it felt like, well, you know, there's still there's still those unique opportunities. There's still our lane. But as you go, you have to redefine what you are and and evolve and adapt. You can't just stay rigid with what you're looking to do and how you present wrestling. If you look at wrestling, how it was presented in the 70s, there's, there's qualities in that DNA you want to bring forward. And there's other stuff you know will not play today. And so that's why I just thought it was like, look, let's just adapt that think that think different strategy and approach every day as a first day, new jet first day on the job. It's a new day on the job and not be married to everything we had locked down, but be open minded and, ad and adjust and adapt. And you know, look at the company today versus where it was even a year ago. We've sold out every show um since january since the beginning of the year we've our action figure line our toy line is sold out we're trying to get another wave of them in before uh, the end of the summer we're the number one trending thing on triller for our premium live events and uh we got great star power arguably the most star power we've ever had with matt riddle uh, satoshi kojima mystico and the list goes on and on great new era wrestlers like alex kane delmi exo in our women's division so you know just trying to keep things going where you're giving them a new era of wrestling, but you're giving them a little bit of everything at the same time. You talked about having to evolve and adapt and, and you had to do that and, and you have not backed down. I mean, you're, you guys took on the big guys, you fought for what you believe was right. And you came out, you know, winning that case. Um, and, and just from your perspective, as you look at your company, do you kind of feel like, OK, you know, we we need to not just adapt and evolve, but we don't have to take a backseat to anybody. You know, we're going to fight for what we believe in. And and look what happens when you do that. You know, you can actually win. Is, is that kind of the attitude that, that you had going into that that whole thing? I think you have to be resilient. I mean, one of the things we were both at WWE that I remember Paul Heyman, it was like a rough day at the office and he was running ECW, which was at the time, like a reboot of a, of a cherished, loved uh, wrestling organization from the nineties. And it was being kind of reimagined through the WWE corporate machine. And he still had a big part in trying to contribute and, and shepherd this thing to being as true and as it could be in, based on those conditions. But I remember him just, one day we're just, I'm sitting in his office. He goes, you know, this is a tough business. It's a tough business. Not everyone's cut out for this business. Uh, you got to be resilient. 
you know, you're, it's, you're going to have to take some punches and you're going to have to keep getting back up mm-hmm. and you got to keep attacking. You got to keep attacking. Um, and so I think that's true with any business though. I think that's the kind of thing that you could apply, whether you're, you know, have a startup business, whether, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're starting a tech business, you, you're going to have challenges. You're going to have to figure out a way to be inventive, work through it, problem solve it and, and adapt. But also, you know, you got to hold your ground in this business or they're going to walk over you. It can be a ruthless business. It can be a very tough business. Um, and you just got to hold the line. And you got to be able to make sure that, you know, you hold people accountable when they try to disrupt your business. So looking at the card for the show in Atlanta, uh, you know, one of the things that when I've gone to live shows, one of the most fun events is, is a battle royal, whatever form it takes. The the 40 man uh, battle riot, what you guys are doing. I mean, where did that how did that genesis of that idea come about? And and what can someone who has not seen this type of event before, uh, what can they expect on on Saturday when you guys roll that out there? Well, you know, it, it's the biggest match of the year we do. Literally 40 wrestlers, there's surprises, there's legends in it, there's luchadors in it, there's MLW's best, there's New Japan Pro Wrestling's best, there's Mexico's best. It is amazing to watch. It's a fun experience. A new wrestler every 60 seconds. You can eliminate guys over the top rope by pinfall or submission. So you get like six guys, you know, wrapping someone up in one submission to tap them out. Uh, you don't see that in any other match like this. Uh, and the winner of this gets a title shot anytime, anywhere. They could cash it in Saturday night. They could cash it in two weeks from now. It's anytime, anywhere. The origin for the battle riot actually came when I was in this room in Stanford, which had a red carpet that you probably remember. Don't want to give you PTSD, mm-hmm. but in that creative writer's room, as it was called, right. you know, we were one day going through the exercise of, you know, man, the Royal Rumble has been around a few decades. We kind of we need to put some lipstick on this thing and, and, and dress it up. Uh, what can we do if we were to look at this totally different than what we've done in past years? And that was the the like the task at hand. And so I went back to my my office and uh, started to type away on our laptops there and came up with like, well, what if what if, you know, you could pin guys? What if you could? Uh, eliminate guys by submission and what if we expanded it you know if we've done 30 forever so kind of like the genesis of, M- of mlw's battle riot was like blowing up the royal rumble as a creative exercise and then you know decade and a half later i did that and it's been our hottest show every year it sold out when we introduced it in 2018 in new york city uh and it's it's a hot ticket i mean look i knew when we came to atlanta we had to give them something big mm-hmm. there's nothing bigger than the battle riot it literally is our biggest match of the year and we're gonna i mean we're, we're certainly probably selling out the uh the hotels just filling it up with wrestlers this weekend in atlanta but we're really excited this is going to be a big one we're the biggest one to date how do you assess where the business is today from the amount of product we have to the amount of ways you can watch it. I mean, you know, back in the 70s, 80s, whenever people got in, in, in into it, if you wanted to see wrestling from across the world, you had to trade tapes. And sometimes it would take weeks or months or you had to you had to have tapes like a VCR. Right. Now you've got so many services. You've got so many ways to watch it. So there's obviously you could the, the danger of getting too much product and you kind of have to pick and choose what you want. But do you think... MLW is, do you think the wrestling atmosphere or environment right now is good for a company like MLW? Because now more people than ever can watch it on, on different services, streaming. They can come to the shows. Obviously, Atlanta fans here, they know about your product because they're selling the place out. I mean, are you kind of happy with where you are in this current environment of, of how we see pro wrestling today? What I think the fans wanted always was variety. And, you know, it's my then obligation to give them something different that my competitors aren't doing. And if my competitors copy something from me, I could complain and take to social media and have a pity party. Or I could say, you know what? All right, come with something else and just keep coming up and be, you know, Gary Hart, a legendary manager and and matchmaker and booker for World Class Championship Wrestling was my mentor. And he always thought, you know, like when uh, the WCW took great Muda. Uh, and took his idea and, and did kind of wacky stuff with it. And other promoters did that. He created the Ultimate Warrior, King Kong Bundy. I mean, literally created the characters, told him, you know, Bundy to shave his head and Warrior put the makeup on, call himself Warrior. You know, they can take my ideas, but they they could t- but they can't execute it. 
Mm-hmm. It's all up here. They can't take my mind. And so I think it's so important to then take that and apply it to what we're doing. You can take talent, you can take ideas, but you can't take the the, the mind. And as long as I know where I'm going with the product, I, I, I feel confident that I'll always be able to be resilient with MLW and come up with different ways forward. Um, and I think today now, the cool thing is there's this kind of kind of a throwback to the seventies where you had territories acknowledging each other and they would have talent crossover back and forth. And I think that's happening now. And there's kind of like, I guess that the, 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 the nerd term would be, you know, a multiverse of things that you can do in a way, but you do have these, like these bridges that are, or these draw bridges that are coming down and you're letting other talent, other promotions come and go. Kojima, First ever MLW champion back in 2002 is our world heavyweight champion today. First two-time champion. He's from New Japan, uh, our world middleweight champion. Mystico, the biggest box office uh, star of Mexico of the 21st century from CML in Mexico. Um, so to have that opportunity for the fans to see some of these big stars, these legends cross over and our guys go to Mexico, it's it's huge. It's 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 exciting. Uh, I'll let you go with this. Normally, I finish up by saying, okay, give me the hard sell for the show, but the show is sold out. You don't need to sell any more tickets, but um, for those of us who are going or for those of us or for those watching who would maybe want to go check out the next one, what? how would you describe what's going to happen on Saturday just with the different matches, different styles of wrestlers, all that good stuff? Oh, yeah. I mean, you're going to see two tapings. You're going to see a live uh, show that's going to be streaming worldwide on YouTube for free at 9 p.m. Eastern. But then we're going to tape a national cable special for BN Sports from 7 to 9. So we get two for the price of one. Uh, I think the biggest thing that MLW brings to the table is $15 gets you in. Uh, I think that was a big reason that people like this. You, you get you can bring the whole family, you can bring your friends. Uh, and I can confirm as an exclusive to you that we will return to Atlanta Saturday night, September 14th. All right. You can get your ticket starting Saturday night at 7.30. So if you missed out on this one, you can go to Ticketmaster at 7.30 and get your tickets for uh, September 14th. We're coming back and we're bringing our, our, one of our other biggest shows of the year, Fightland. Mm. That's hosted by Atlanta, center stage.